coming in to the village of Casanova, New York. There's the uh, town park along the lake. Casanova Lake is a pretty big lake. It's kind of a semi-private lake, but it's a big lake that they do a lot of um, sailing on. Route 20 and 13 zigzag through town. Casanova College is here. If you come to Casanova, one of the things I recommend is uh, Kaz Pizza, which is right here on my right. It's a very quaint little pizza shop and bar. It's got really good pizza. If you want to spend a little more money, on the left is the Link Lane House, which has really good food, but it's pricey, as any good restaurant is. The library we just went by is a unique library in that it has an authentic Egyptian mummy in the library. It's kind of enshrined in its own little uh, museum room, and it's pretty cool. Route 20 used to be called the Cherry Valley Turnpike. It's a very pretty road um, paralleling the New York State Thruway, Interstate 90. It goes through an awful lot of quaint little towns, and it's mostly all up and down. <laughs> it's going up hills and down hills. It's a very beautiful scenic route for uh, somebody who's just traveling through and has a lot of time. It will take at least three hours, maybe four, to go what will take two hours on the interstate highway. But you have a lot of things to see and do and it's a very pretty highway. Just be careful what you meet on the road. This is the country and you'll meet all sorts of things. The easy way to get to Stony Pond is to take the Erieville Road out of Nelson to Old State Road and then follow Old State Road to Jones Road. But this is uh, Erieville Road. It's a nice highway. Not too windy. If you go the other way, it's a little windier. Follow your GPS. It's prettier. We are on Jones Road, just coming into Stony Pond State Forest. We just entered the forest. And there are parking spots here for um, cross-country skiers, Nordic ski trails. Uh, I guess there's a good selection of trails here on the state map on the website has a whole lot of trails. I've done a little bit of hiking in here. I think they would be considered fairly moderately hard ski trails because they're uh, they're up and down. There's a lot of ups and downs. But um, I don't, they do not groom them I don't think but I'm not sure. We're on a uh, paved road, and apparently they just paved this section. So it, uh, I thought it used to be dirt. So I guess they've done some work on it, and they've done some good improvements. Here's another uh, part of the forest. The sign, more. Uh, more trails. It's a little section here that's posted. It's not state property anymore. We are looking for the campsites that are really at the pond. Coming down the road to the campgrounds, there's no real warning to where the turnoff is. at the bottom of this hill and you can just barely see 
the dirt driveway to the camp area. And this is the road into the camping area. This is a dirt road, dirt and gravel. It's a little uh, potholey, but not bad. We're going along at 15 miles an hour. I see post-it signs on either side of the road. I hope I'm not on the wrong road. I guess we are here. Um, there are a lot of these signs, which is the way it is around here. Camping by permit only. There are campsites here, and they're free, but it's heavily used in the summer. This is a well-worn dirt road. Here are campsites. Here's a campsite over there where somebody is camping, or cleaning up. They seem to have uh, bathrooms, Portage on bathrooms, handicapped accessible. Another campsite. It's number five. Here is the pond. That's campsite number four right there. That looks like a nice trailer site. So this is campsite number four. It's right across the entrance to the pond at the dike. Um, none of these are very level or even, but uh, they're pretty big and spacious and uh, fairly shaded. I mean, they're all shaded. This is the dike that holds back the water. It's a pretty big lake. It has a boat launch. And uh, 17 campsites, I think, including two tent sites. The boys like it, but they're frustrated that they can't, uh, can't go swimming. <laughs> I won't let them swim. looks uh, pretty muddy along the shore. Uh, since this is a man-made lake, I imagine it's a pretty deep mud bottom lake. But uh, it's, it's nice. Sorry about the wind. Here is another site. This is pretty level, 
big wide site for a camper or a trailer, which it looks like that might have been what's in here. Um, you got a big area over here for a tent or a or a area to eat. The fire ring is way over there. They actually have grates in the fire rings. Pine tree's been a little damaged, but it's pretty thick woods around these. So what site is this? Need to find a site number. This is um, right across. This is right across from a picnic area that is designated no camping. It's a picnic area that's um, pretty slanted on a hill, and it has no picnic tables. Campsite number two looks pretty unlevel, pretty small get a camper into. Uh, it's got some nice trees, would be an excellent hammock camping area. Campsite number 13. Not bad. Fit a small camper in there. It's right down near the lake though. It's good. Campsite 15. It's a fairly wide, wide open campsite. Um, it might even get sun around noon if you're thinking solar. But um, behind. So this is at the end of the road, and there's a good area to turn around with a big vehicle. Or trailer. Here's site 14. That's a big site. Looks nice. And 13. Got a good landing pad. Another portage on for those who need to have a secluded place to sit down. Apparently it's been pretty muddy here. 